No, if there are directives of the ruling class being carried out by three letter agencies, the question then logically follows, who is the ruling class? And I would say it's a, it's a touchy thing to talk about because a lot of people have deep emotional uh, ties to the narrative that they've been indoctrinated through school and maintained through mass media <clears throat> over their lifetime. So they don't like to think that there's anything like a ruling class. They like to think that they have a democracy. We also learned the false verbiage that that represents. We actually are supposed to have a constitutional republic, but only if the government's based on a constitution. So when it gets outside of that, it, it kind of becomes a democracy, which is a very useful middle ground between freedom and slavery that despots and tyrants like to take advantage of with their slippery slopes. Slippery slopes like having you believe that there's no effective ruling class for this country or the world for that matter. And I'm not going to cite something recent. I'm going to go back into history. Let's go back to the year 1954 in a book published by the Oxford University Press. Oxford Press. Let's go to this book. It's called The Power Elite. The Power Elite by C. Wright Mills. Charles Wright Mills crafted this book 1956 i'm sorry 1956 we got to get those uh the power elite first edition by c wright mills and oxford university press new york this is not uh uh this is not breitbart this is not some alt-right something or other from the internet this is history from 1956 table of contents looks like this the higher circles the celebrities, the very rich, the chief executives, the corporate rich, the warlords, the military ascendancy, the, the political directorate, the theory of balance. We're going to tune into that in a second. I'm going to take you there to page 242. Learn a little bit about the theory of balance, the power elite, the mass society, the conservative mood, the higher immorality. Okay. Now, before I can take you to that juicy page in a book, I got to take you to this browser. On this browser, in this section, it's a page on C. Wright Mills, it says, or rather, it reads, The Power Elite. Let me bring up the browser so I can actually highlight it for you. The Power Elite, 1956, describes the relationships among the political, military, and economic elites, noting that they share a common worldview, that power rests in the centralization of authority within the elites of American society. Centralization of authority is made up of the following components, and it goes on. But I rather want to take you to the actual entry. This is C. Wright Mills's page. Part of what he did in his life was write the power elite. They have a whole entry on the power elite. The power elite is a 1956 book by sociologist C. Wright Mills, Charles Wright Mills, in which Mills calls attention to the interwoven interests of the leaders of the military, corporate, and political elements of society and suggests that the ordinary citizen in modern times is a relatively powerless subject of manipulation by those three entities. Oxford University Press, 1956. How much has changed? The only thing that has changed is that that sentence right now, people would have you believe that's crazy. There's no group of people or powerful political interests shaping the world to make you feel powerless, but they were quite open about it. This is a very popular book, especially among the ruling class. Their names are all through it. So let's go back to the book. Let's go back to the split screen. Let's just go to the index real quick and whet our appetites. Let's see, zoom out a little bit so we can see all these juicy pages of Carnegie and corporations of power, Alan Dulles, the DuPonts, mm, Vannevar Bush, Henry Ford, Vannevar Bush, John Kenneth Galbraith. Oh, wasn't he in the yeah, Johnny Galbraith. Vedmore all article yeah. with uh, Klaus Schwab and those guys? Um, the Gould family, Oliver Wendell Holmes, the Hotchkiss School. These are all uh, points of interest. When I first got this book, I wanted to read about Kuhn Loeb and Company and Walter Lippmann and lobbying and the Masons and Andrew Mellon and uh, Gaetano Mosca, JP Morgan. And here's some of the better pages, in my estimation, researching Rhodes, Rockefeller, so and Rothschild. You can find them all on page 421. So for those of you who think that Rhodes, Rothschild, Rockefeller aren't among the power elite, 
it's been known for over 70, 80 years at this point in literary academic. I mean, let me just take you to page 243 and show you the, the academic quality of this book. On this page, let's get it on screen here. Let's do it like this. Clear the decks. This part is the narrative. This part is the footnote. <laughs> That's like the books this I read in philosophy. This part is the narrative. That's crazy. This part is yeah. the footnote. Footnotes. Okay? This is the theory of balance. The prime focus of the theory of balance. Let's get it on the screen and zoom it in. Need a drink so I don't spill it. Let's go. The prime focus of the theory of balance is the Congress of the United States and its leading actors are the congressmen. Yet, as social types, these 96 senators and 435 representatives are not representative of the rank of the in file of the citizens. They represent those who have been successful in entrepreneurial and professional professional endeavors. Older men. They are, uh, are, they are of the privileged white native born of native parents, Protestant Americans. They are college graduates and they are at least solid upper middle class of income and status. On average, they have had no experience of wage or lower salaried work. They are in short in of and of, uh, in and of the new and old upper classes of local society. Let's go to this next page. Some members of Congress are millionaires. Others must scrounge the countryside for expense money. The expenses of office are now quite heavy, and often including the maintenance of two homes and traveling between them, the demands of an often busy social life, and the greatly increased cost of getting elected and staying in office. An outside income is now almost indispensable for congressmen, and in fact, four out of five of the representatives and two out of three senators in 1952 received incomes other than their congressional salaries from businesses or professionals, which they still maintain in their home. And now today it's been replaced with lobbyist money and special interests. So you yourself can go read the power elite by C Wright Mills. It's on the internet. You can read it for free. There is no excuse not to know this information. There is no excuse to tolerate the ignorance of people who say, well, the Rothschilds or the DuPonts or the Rockefellers, they're not really coordinating behind the scenes in some way, shape, or form through all these working groups and non-governmental organizations that they sponsor to do a bigger picture. It has been known. You can read it in Andrew Carnegie's words. You can read it in the Warburg's words. You can read it in David Rockefeller's memoirs, page 402 or 405. I forget the page. It's been a couple of years. Should we, re should we revisit it? Do you need to see that he and his family are a group of internationalists with the expressed interest of going beyond the American ideal to create a world government? And he said, it's, if he stands accused, he's guilty of it. This is, this is 20 years ago, David Rockefeller had that to write. So for people to go around today saying conspiracy theory, that's just their excuse for saying, I don't know how to use my brain yet. I've never compared and contrasted. I've only seen the little child's view, the caricature of reality popularized through mainstream media i've never learned to think for myself and i'm not really interested all right leave them to jesus but for everyone else who knows how to pick up a book and read some words communicate yourself uh the information then communicate it to other people you communicate to yourself uh from reading the pages that's comprehension and then you use your rhetorical skills to share it with other people start a book club start there start with some evidence and something that depicts the actual reality that exists from there truth is a lot easier to find <laughs>